Hey guys, welcome to Broad Street to Britain, a UK Philly show. And I am delighted to say I am joined by a very special guest. And he is one of the most biggest and renowned Philly sports fans, let alone Phillies fans. In I'm going to say globally, like I think everybody knows who this guy is right now. I am joined by the Philly sports guy, Jamie. Jamie, how are you, buddy? Uh, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I, I was really excited, uh, especially when you sent me the message. Hey, you wanted to interview me. I was like, really? I, I mean, you're a big <laughs> deal over here. You know, everybody knows you over here. And they're like, you know wow. that guy from England who does all the podcasts? It's a big UK guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm used to hearing that guy, but I always hear about you being that guy over there. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm just happy to be on your show. You are very much that guy over here because the amount of people when I've been to Passyunk and doing the fan events and people reaching out to me on on uh, on the DMs going, is it's a Philly sports guy coming? Like, is he coming to London for London Series? Just to confirm, Jamie, you are coming, right? I am going to be there, absolutely. There's no way I would miss this. I mean, if they're going to be playing a game anywhere, I mean, I try to get to as many games as possible, but I mean – to go over to London and, and go against one of our biggest rivals. Right. I, I, how do you miss that? I, there's no chance that I wasn't going to be able to make it to there. Oh, I'm, a, I'm excited. A lot, a lot of, I can tell you now, a lot of people are excited to meet you. <laughs> Anything else, Jamie, uh, just to add to the whole experience. We'll get to London series very, very shortly. Uh, just a quick note for the show, the London series guide, I have spent the last week editing it like crazy. It's about 35 minutes long. It should be out tomorrow. I've been hit with a bit of flu this week and a bit of cold. So I've been pegged back a little bit doing the voiceover stuff, but I'm back fighting. The guide, yeah, it's about 35 minutes long. It'll be on the YouTube channel. It covers pretty much everything to do with London, transport, hotels, London series, the stadium. I've covered it all for you, made it as insightful as possible, the events going on around the, the, the weekend, and it's it's going to be out tomorrow, <laughs> and I'm so happy to see it out because it's a massive load and a, a more work than even I thought it was going to be. It's been fun, but whew, it's been tough work, but it's it's hopefully covers every questions that you guys have asked me so far, so... Uh, any more questions you do have, guys, of course, reach out. Always reach out. I'm happy to help. Uh, Jamie, the Phillies right now. How about them fightings, Jamie? The oh, tell me about it. I mean... Top of the NL East. Eight straight home wins. 12 above 500. I cannot believe this. And it's May. It's early May. Jamie, what do you make of this Phillies team so far? Not something that we're used to. We're used to having to fight back later in the season. Uh, right. But this team came in uh, when I went to spring training, you could tell just the demeanor of these guys were like, hey, listen, we are not going to accept failure this year. We are going to the World Series and we're going to win it. And you to have that mindset in the very beginning and to have the camaraderie that this team has, I'm always a big fan of a team that drinks together wins together right. and that doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out to the bars or whatever this team is having fun with each other they enjoy each other in the locker room they enjoy playing with each other out on the field they're never out of a game whatsoever i mean they could go into the seventh and eighth inning and still be able to come back and win these games and you know it's not just been the hitting it's been the pitching the yeah. pitching has been outstanding i i if Ranger keeps up this pace, there's going to be he's going to be a unanimous decision for yeah you know, to win maybe even MVP because yeah, I mean already yeah. he's proven to be one of the best pitchers in baseball. I mean other than Wheeler who's been lights out, Nola has been great, and yeah. then even the young guys coming out uh, has been just amazing. I, I we you, we can't talk enough about it. I agree, and I I, I still feel there's more to come. I, I still feel they haven't acted. The pitching has been great, but the offense, you still think there's more to come from these guys. You know, Cassie's going to get hot at some point. He's going to catch a light. Gutted about Turner, but the great thing about the Phils, as we've seen the last couple of years, is everyone that steps up has that next man up mentality. You know, Cody Clemens has showed it last year and so far this year. Sosa's stepped through. Sosa's actually not having a bad season at all when he has played. Even the guys, the bench guys, when they get the opportunity, they want to take it. 
And you're right, in spring training, it had that. It's business time. You know, this business-like mentality. The fun's still there. The vibes are still there. But also, it's like, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're not having a postseason hangover this time. We're not, No excuses. There's no excuses. Let's get out there and get it. I just, I just Alec Bowman, Brandon Marsh, the, the daycare guys are just unreal. And everyone knows I'm the biggest Bone fan going. And I'm so happy for him. Like, if he can maintain this, again, the sky's the limit for him. He's... He's already playing his way into an all star all star game. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, and it's I mean, it's just been amazing. I mean, you think about the start of the season, Nick Castellanos has kind of struggled a little bit. Harper kind of struggled a yeah. little bit. I mean, uh, Schwarber has been Schwarber esque, you know, just batting around the 200 mark and you know, getting walks and hitting home runs and things like that. Uh Obviously, Turner, much better start to this, this season than last season. And then the guys in the outfield, I mean, just you know, between everybody out there doing their part to contribute, even when you have a guy who's like down and he's, you know, ultimately they're not, you know, when they're not hitting real well, they're, they're picking it up in other ways, getting on base, being able yeah. to steal bases and things like that. I mean, this is, a, this is about as complete a team as I've seen this early in the season since what was it 2009 2010 <laughs> yeah yeah it's just a complete package right now you're you're right and, and even kyle in the outfield for that rare game still made a great catch <laughs> you know he's still it's just it's clicking it's really clicking and you're right even with castiano struggling and bryce hasn't fully got going that's what i mean i feel there's more to come when those two start getting going you know obviously other players may regress but it's just everybody's carrying each other right now. Everyone has each other's backs. And it's just the crowds are fantastic. The atmospheres are fantastic. Even last night in that rain-drenched game, it was great. When I was there for the, the Red Series in the game that, you know, it was about 100 people. Even still, you know, everyone who was there was making noise. And it's just, there's a great feel between the players, the coaches, the fans. Are you getting that now, you know, when you're going? Are you getting that? You're looking around, you know, the ballpark's packed. You know, yes. I'm looking around other ballparks and it's got nothing on CBP right now. There just seems to be a real sense of belief. Yeah, I, it's, it, it reminds me back in the 2008-2012 uh, era when uh, it was the toughest ticket to get in Major League Baseball and maybe in Philadelphia in general. Uh, it's been it's been tough to get tickets and they've been going much higher standing room only tickets going yeah. for $70 that that tells me that everybody's showing up that when you have uh, 36 to 42,000 people in attendance on a Thursday night and a Wednesday night, that's when you know things are really clicking on all cylinders. And, you know, the Phillies aren't disappointing either. I mean, it's been, it, you know, I remember, let's think about two years ago when I was going to every game and there would only be about 22,000 people in the stands. Yeah. yeah. And then it wasn't until they beat St. Louis and they came back home after taking one of two from Atlanta in that series. And all of a sudden, you had 46,000 people there screaming their heads off. Absolutely. And I, I remember the, the final Girardi days. I was at the games, actually, on Girardi's final game against the Giants. And then when they sacked him and Topper took over that first LA series. And you're right, there was only about 20, 30,000 there. But even so, at that point, as soon as Girardi was sacked, you could just feel something, you know, an end of an era that way and Topper coming in. Of course, that was the... Uh, the, the, the Bryce Harper Grand Slam, the stop walk off, you know, that was an incredible weekend as it was. But just, you, you're right, ever since that Cardinals game, the playoffs, the, the, the Braves series, and since then it has just sparked. And, you know, even over here, you know, the fan meetups we're getting at Passion for the games, the, the interest has just risen with it. And it's, we're on a high, like the windows now, the win to win the World Series, the windows right now, we, we got to do it, you know. The, but, I truly, but early days, but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I have a bad habit getting ahead of myself, but I'm feeling good. I don't know about you. I think everyone's feeling, we're all trying to remain feet on the ground, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, this team, if it really does click, could could do it. Well, and that's exactly it. Obviously, we're 
what, maybe a quarter of the way done the season. Uh, there's there's still a lot more baseball to go. Uh, we have to, you know, the injury bug hasn't hit us at all. Yeah, I mean, obviously, good. you know, Turner right now is, is going to be out for a few weeks. But right now, everybody is moving in the, you know, the right direction and things are happening the right way. Uh, and I just want them to maintain. It never mattered to me whether they got in first place or not or had the best record in baseball. I care about winning championships, and that means I want them playing their best baseball in late September and early October all the way in. And I've been saying it. I've been saying it since before spring training that the Phillies are going to make the very last out of this of this baseball season. And Let's we're go. going to be having a parade down Broad Street. I've got 10 days left to take off at work, and I'm I'm holding on to him until NLCS weekend and then World Series after the World Series because there's just something in me that believes I'm going to need those days off come <laughs> end of October, uh, early November. I Yeah, then hopefully we can keep it going tonight. National TV tonight, unfortunately. No UK friendly. Uh, Jamie, let's talk about the Philly sports guy. Um, this... I, I remember seeing you for the first time you, you, about, I think it was 2015 at a game. And I was like, who's that guy? I, I was just absorbed by it. You know, the energy, the, the just the way people gravitated towards you and just the happiness you generally bring. Where did, for those who don't know, where did this all come from? When did it start? What was the idea and inspiration behind it when it all started? So uh, ultimately, it started with the Eagles. Uh, I've been painting up for Eagles games for uh, going on 25 years. And uh, I got recognized at a playoff game. And a production company asked me to come in and do a commercial for them for a charity. And I went in there and they said to me, like, after just doing the, the commercial, they're like, your energy is amazing. You're like the Philly sports guy. You should see if that name's available. And it was. <laughs> and ultimately, they said, you know, if you want to try to do this, if you want to learn social media, we'll help you and we'll teach you. And ultimately, it was like, OK, let's try to do this. And then um, I was thinking to myself, I'm not the Eagles sports guy. I'm the Philly sports guy. And I love going to sporting events in general. So. I transferred it over to originally the Flyers, which was the next team, and yeah. then the Phillies. And I, I won't forget the first time I ever went to a Phillies game uh, in full face paint where I started to get really recognized was during COVID. And I had a clear mask. It was just straight clear. And I, I did the paint underneath, and I was yelling at a Mets fan. And the Mets fan was up in the suites, and I was down in the 100 level. And I'm yelling up and pointing at him, and somebody took a picture. And it was like this great picture that kind of just explained it all. It was me yelling at the Mets fans, and we almost came back and won that game. They were up like 12-2, to two, and we wound up losing that game like 12-9 or 12-10. And it was just, a, it was a fight at the end. And it kind of, and they just took that picture of me and it started to explode from there. And then I just, every game that I went to, I, I just, all right, I'm going to paint up. And whatever their jersey is, I'm going to paint those colors. And so the pinstripes were done. And then the creams, I would do the creams. And then I did what I call my Papa Smurf, which is the powder blues yeah. where I, I look like uh, Papa Smurf because I have the red <laughs> mohawk yeah. and, and the blue paint. Uh, and people just kind of loved it. It's, I would walk around the stadium and everybody would take pictures. And, and then I would always wind up at the right place at the right time. For instance, like when the Mets fan got his phone thrown on the field, I happened to be standing right there. Yeah. Uh, when Harper hit the home run against San Diego, and they're showing they have three shots. It's they show me in the outfield. Yep. They show a guy holding a, a Harper fathead, and then they show Harper swinging, uh, the swing of his life, and uh, it you know it's just been amazing. Just the outpouring of you know 
hey, we love you. We love seeing you. The kids come out to the park painted as me. It, it's awesome. really brought another level of excitement to the ballpark beyond what's already happening on the field They're between the Phillies and the Fanatic and just uh, as gorgeous a ballpark as it is. Uh, I just get to add to the excitement. It, it does. It adds to the experience. Absolutely. Like, you're always there looking, where's the Philly sports guy? Like, you weren't, you weren't, I don't think you were there when I was there during the Red Series. Uh, the weather was terrible, so it wouldn't be. No, you. no. I, I've been staying away from rain days at the moment because, obviously, I melt in the rain. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it only, I only go to rain games when it's like a surprise situation because I've spent too many games there, and – it starts to get a lot on me when it's I raining and we're on a delay. I, I take a lot of pictures anyways, but it's really compounded. And when people get packed together, they start to get a little bit more antsy. And it's, I try to stay away from it a little bit just cause it's, it gets a little too much. It, it, it must do. I was going to ask, is there, is there ever times when you you feel like you do need to take a break and a little step back from it all because it must be quite intense, especially when the Eagles are in season, the Flyers, the Sixers and the Phillies, you know, and the Union, <laughs> you know, you've got it all going on and it must take a little bit out of you sometimes. In 2022, the month of October and November, that six week time span, uh, we determined I, and I actually had a college reach out to me. They wanted to do uh, a little bit of a class on me. Interestingly enough, it was like a biology class <laughs> that that said if I was the start of a COVID type disease, how quickly would it have spread just in that month for that was that six week time span between October and November, where the Phillies were going, the Eagles were going, yeah. the Flyers had started, the Sixers had begun, and it was determined that I took like somewhere around 30 to 50,000 pictures wow. and that I touched somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred to 200,000 people. <laughs> and that they determined that just by me, if I was the carrier of COVID that the world would have been infected in, in that six weeks time span entirely. That is insane. <laughs> when you break it down like that, that is absolutely insane. Uh, it, it must it must also be a buzz as well. And it, it takes some balls, right? Dressing up in the face paint. Do you ever get nervous before or when you first started doing it? Do you ever get slightly nervous? Like, here we go. You know, because, you know, sometimes you know, when I, I'm doing vlogs around the ballpark, I'm like, ah, you know, it, it, I don't know. I, I do get a little bit nervous sometimes. But for you, I suppose it's also natural for you now. Uh, it is. And it took a while to learn to talk to my phone. I mean, it yeah. was when I first, the very first video that ever went viral for me was an Eagles video. And I had a kid come up to me and he goes, man, you went viral. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. And he's like, man, you had, you had your video had like 6 million views. And I was like, oh, really? And ultimately and then when I started, it was like, okay, I'm doing this and I'm putting out content and nobody's watching. And it was like yeah. kind of interesting because I'm like, I'm putting out what I think is great content, but nobody's paying attention. And then over time, you, you, you know, people started to follow. But of course, what really, what really does it is when the Philadelphia teams lose. When I would put myself out there and ultimately the team would come back and the team would lose. I was, that's, those are what the big, my biggest videos are. Yeah. When, yeah. Uh, when I say that the season is over, I am like the sound boy for the last, <laughs> yeah. you know, for losing, for losing your last game in the season. And it's, you know, those are the ones that always go viral, but I, I just kept working through it and you had to get past the haters. There's lots of haters. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, but the haters are, the haters are the sign that you've made it. Because exactly that the haters are more loyal than your followers. They're the ones that your followers are going to like and move on. The haters are going to sit there and watch your video six or seven times to figure out what to say because they want to hate on you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, and I, I had to learn not to talk back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, just it. like dismiss them now. Now it's like, I, you, I don't even hear you over 
the cheering. The, the cheering around me is much louder than the haters now. Absolutely. And it, it always helps when the Phillies teams are also doing well because you, you ride the wave as well. Because every it's amazing how Philly sports dictates everyone's mood and happiness, happiness and mental health. It really is. You know, when the Philly sports are doing well at the Phillies right now, it's life's good. You know, life's, life's great. Everybody's happy, you know, waking up to all these wins. And it, it definitely helps, again, the engagement and the likes. Uh, I find it on on my account as well. When the Phillies are, are hot, you ride the wave. When they're not, well, I don't really post anyway. I just turn social media off after a loss. I, I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, uh, where are we? Um, are, are all your videos done in one take, or have you ever gone? Ah, oh, got to start again. Got to start again because they, they look, they look like they're all in one take. I am, I am the king of one takes. I have had to restart. I could probably count. Uh, I think now, like on both hands how many videos i've ever had to retake wow that's impressive just because it's i i mean i'm i'm used to it and, and i yeah, you just do it and send it out there if it sounds great great if it if it if it misses the mark the next video will be better you know so i i just it's one of those things where i've just kind of learned hey i'm just going to put my feelings out there and that's really what it's all about when right. Philadelphia fan, we wear our passion for our sports teams on our sleeves. So when I'm excited, it's easy to be able to do that. When I'm frustrated, it's easy to kind of show that too. And I kind of help the sentiment. I help give a voice to the people that don't do this, that really say what he said. I agree with him because he's the one. Uh, that's super excited. He's the one that's really frustrated with what's going on. And he's talking for me a little bit. And I don't ever want to put words in anybody's mouth. And I don't ever say uh, I speak for everyone because everybody else has got an opinion too. And I don't ever like to think of myself as the greatest fan. I'm just a fan who wears different makeup than everybody else. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> but so, you have this, but you have that passion. Uh, that Philly is so renowned for, yeah, and he, and that's that's what I love. I, I remember when I, I say when I first saw you, I'm like, that's Phil, that guy is Philly sports to me right there. That that passion he has, that's 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 what I feel. You know, he he's saying exactly what you said. He's you sort of saying what I feel. You know, and I, I think again, you do it so well. Does you, does your voice? If I have to have time out for your voice, does it get hurst? Does it get slightly sore? Your throat? So it, it I would do. say I, I typically am loud in general. So most of the time, no. However, the month of October and November in 2022, <laughs> uh, my voice changed forever. I'm deeper now. I, I have a deeper voice than what I did wow. even back then. And I used to be able to uh, you know, sing when I, when I did sing like three and being within three octaves or so, not anymore. I'm down to like, wow. two octaves. I, I don't, I don't have that higher range that I used to. And that was from just stressing my vocal cords where I was raspy towards the end of the, you know, the, cause yeah. it not only, I'm not only we were we in the NLCS, but the soccer team was also in yeah, their the union, yeah. conference championship and the Eagles were doing great. So it was like nonstop. It was like every other day there was uh, me yelling. And during that time, the flyers started out the season like seven and oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. Winning begets winning when there's one team and the electricity transfers over and you start getting that electricity in uh, Lincoln Financial Field in Subaru Park in the Wells Fargo Center, and like I said, winning is contagious. Yeah. So when you have when you start winning, that's why I feel when the Phillies do win the World Series, that's going to start a chain reaction that I believe could really propel the Philadelphia sports scene to mimic something that happened in 1980, where all the sports teams went to the championship. Yeah, because you feel like they're not far. You know, the Flyers had and at the beginning of the Flyers season. Nobody expected them to get to the playoffs. They had a great year. All in all, yeah, it was disappointing how it ended. But you feel well, they're potentially not far away. The Sixers, they're not far away. The Eagles, not far away. The Phillies, not far away. But you're right. If the Phillies can just bring it home, 
it's because you because it is that the Philly sports teams all do seem to do well at the same time. It's no coincidence, right? But it's just that it's just that final, just the final over the line, getting over the line. You know, it has just been the problem of like. But I feel if one of us can do it, and hopefully the Phillies, I think you're right. I think this could just set a precedent, and then a Philly sports could just go well to the moon. You know, you know, it, exactly. it really could. And just imagining the state of Philly and the fan bases, which just is insane. And it will be a lot, a lot of fun. How, how many games would you say you do a year in a, in a calendar year? Oh, uh, so we figured it out to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 to 180 games. Uh, obviously I go to every Eagles game, which uh, on great seasons is 20 games and last year was only 18 games because we only went to the yeah. one playoff game uh the phillies is somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 games because of going uh, as many games during the regular season as i can and then as many playoff games as i can make it to and then of course the you know, the Flyers, the Sixers are about 25 to 30 games each. The Union's about 15 to 20 games. The Wings are about yeah, another yeah. 5 to 10 games. So any Philadelphia franchise that I could go to, uh, I'm going to go to and, and support. Are you able to actually see much of the games and take it in with everybody asking you for pictures and doing your videos? Did you actually get to see much of the games as well? No. <laughs> I would say that I probably get to see more in the seventh and eighth innings than I then, you know, then during the game. Uh, yeah. As funny as this sounds, I, I brought my son to one of the playoff games last year and, and he's, he's 15 years old uh, and not the biggest of sports fans, as funny as that sounds. And in the playoffs, we're, we're there. And uh, of course it's bases loaded and, and starts up to bat. And, I got him some ice cream and he went to go climb the wall in the, like that kid's wall that they have yeah. behind, uh, behind center field and right field. And when he hit that grand slam, I had to put the phone really close to my face. Cause I needed to let everybody, I had to kind of show <laughs> like that there wasn't anybody around me because everybody's watching the game and I'm watching him climb the wall. So it was, it was kind of unique where I didn't even see that grand slam, but it's such an iconic video of, for me because I were right in the middle of it and I have it right up at my face because I didn't want to show that there's nobody around me. And I, I was standing <laughs> there by incredible. myself watching that. That's good. That was against the Marlins, wasn't it? The uh, the wild card. Was it the wild card Grand Slam? Yes. Yes, yeah. it was. Wow, it's so. magic, ma magic memories. What for you? What are your what are your best memories? It, it, it can be Phillies and any Philly sports throughout the years. What what's up there with the highlights? And also then the the worst because the Philly sports is very up and down. So your highest and your lows. So uh, I mean, a lot of them are Phillies stuff it's because i was there in 93 when the game started at one o'clock in the morning and we stayed till four o'clock in the morning to watch mitch williams with the pinch hit you know to to walk off yeah uh, i was there when mitch williams threw a one two three ninth inning against the braves uh you know at, at veteran stadium uh, i was there in 2008 13 rows from the field uh behind the tampa bay dugout when we won the World Series in game for game five for both halves of that. And uh, the mother of my children was the one who bought me the ticket because it was my birthday. My birthday is October 20th. So it's always right around oh, yeah. that time. And that was my birthday present. And we were about to have a baby. So my, my son was about to be born about a month and a half later. Wow. And we were getting offered like ridiculous amounts of money for the tickets. And I'm like, there's no way that I can give this up. There's no chance that I could turn down possibly watching us win the World Series. And it's, you know, so those are some of the highlights. You know, obviously being there for Harper, hitting that home run. I yeah. mean, that may have been the absolute loudest I've ever heard any ballpark whatsoever. You know, winning the NFC Championship game uh, with the Eagles was amazing 
Same thing with the Union being there for their Eastern Conference Championship. Uh, also was amazing. Uh, the down moments, there's been, you know, sitting there and watching that no-hit World Series after we hit seven home runs and then get the rain delay. Yeah. You know, the, like we get rained out. Imagine if we didn't get rained out and it was just one after another. I That actually, it was that baseball game that was when I missed my first ever football game in like four years. Oh, wow. Because it was on the same Thursday that they were playing in Houston for, yeah, the Eagles were playing in Houston on a Thursday night game and I'm at the World Series. So it was the first game that I had missed in four years of, of an Eagles game. But playoffs are always more important than regular season. Right. Oh, absolutely. Just a, a completely different intensity. You know, being there in 2022 and, and last year for the, the playoffs for the first time in my fandom just blew me away. And because I started following in 2012 and then throughout those years, everyone's going, wait till they get to the playoffs. You experience nothing like it. And it got to a point around 2019, 2020, where I'm thinking, is it going to, is this going to happen soon? <laughs> you know? And then when right. we finally got there, and I was lucky enough to be there for the Reese Bat Spike, which for me will be number one. It, last year was awesome beating the Braves. The Harper home run was awesome. But the, for me, the, being a big Reese fan, that Bat Spike, that home run, everything it meant, it was the first big playoff moment in, in recent Phillies history as well. The, the noise, the hysteria was just unbelievable the, uh, yeah. the park was shaking <laughs> you know it yes. was physically shaking the energy and i've been to so many sporting events and so many huge soccer games over here and never for that moment of euphoria have i just hugged i ran up and down the concourse hugging strangers jumping around celebrating like i saw you saw blackout like a minute later you stood there going what just happened you know what Right. What was going on? And that, and then again, the next day, JT inside the Parker, uh, Brandon Marsh went yard and just beating the Brave on both those occasions last year as well. The Harper home run, that was special to stare down. Yeah, there is nothing like playoff baseball. And oh, damn, you know, even just thinking about it now, I get tingles. It like, gives you goosebumps. It makes your right. hair stand it's, up. It's, 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 it really it, does. It, it's been, it's been absolutely amazing. And you think about in 2022 where we made it in Houston in the last series. Yeah. You know, all places. Yeah. Yeah. It was funny because obviously we won that game, the second game of the series or the first game of that series. And we clinched, they went out and party the next game. They, they almost got no hit. Yeah. They, they wound yeah. up, they wound up getting a hit with two outs in the ninth. And that's how they, they wound up like ending their season. They, the next game, they wound up playing it out. I think yeah. they lost that yeah. game too, but it didn't matter. And I remember being out in Arizona because the Eagles were playing the Cardinals that day or that weekend. And I was having a, a putt-putt charity event. And nobody showed up because the Phillies were playing because <laughs> it was 11 o'clock in the morning out there when the Phillies are playing. So one o'clock when I was supposed to have my event, everybody's still watching the Phillies. <laughs> and they came back and, you know, they won that game in the eighth inning, if you remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then they, they, they crushed in game two. And then the first two games away, I left Arizona and I went to Atlanta. And I was there for the two games in Atlanta. Uh, for those, and the first game we won, the second game, I wore the blues early. I wore my blue paint early because I wanted to change it up a little bit, and we lost that game. And that started like the first of my seven game losing streak wearing the Thursday blues. Ooh. I was like, I don't, I don't want to wear them anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't blame you. Um, and looking ahead, the London series, you're, you're, you're coming over. Is this your first time to London, or have you been before? I have been to London. Uh, a long time ago, I, 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 I traveled. So when I graduated high school, uh, I went right into the Navy. So, right. and I knew this going in, going into my senior year. So my junior year, between my junior and senior year, I went backpacking through Europe and I started in Ireland. I went to England and spent five days in London, stayed with a family out in Litchfield. I'm okay, not exactly yeah. sure. 
how far out that is. They took me to a cricket match. I went to go to Wimbledon. I got to sit oh, wow. at the main court to watch. Uh, uh, it was Connors play, playing that day. And then also uh, Chris Everett before she became Chris Everett Lloyd. So right. That's how yeah, far yeah, back yeah. I'm wow. dating myself now. <laughs> so <laughs> had black pudding. I, I, I learned all about oh, you did it all. all. You really did it all. Yes, I did. Uh, so, and, and it was, it was amazing. I remember uh, going to, yeah, I'm like, what's Piccadilly Circus? I'm figuring I'm going to go see a whole bunch of animals. It's just a <laughs> bunch of shops. You didn't, I didn't know any better. And I wound up meeting the Welsh girls choir and uh, went ice skating with them. I, I, wow. I'm like, really, this is so that's, those are some of the memories I have of London. <laughs> Wow, that's that that's awesome. And I, I say we're so excited to have you over. Uh, when are you when are you flying in? What's 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 the plans for for London series for yourself? So I'm um, I'm traveling with Philly Sports Trips. Yep. And uh, we, we are going to be getting we're going to be getting over there. I believe it's June sixth, and then uh, we're staying there to the twelfth. So obviously we're getting the two games uh, on the eighth and the ninth. And then, yeah, spending a couple extra days just to just to be able to go see some of the things now with an older eye. Yeah, I was such yeah. a young kid <laughs> running around the streets of London. Now I get to kind of see it and and do some actual sightseeing. It's it's going to be it's going to be incredible, and and hopefully you can pop by past Young Avenue as well because it's. It's going to be huge parties. I figure the, uh, that's one fun. of the first stops I'm doing. I, I, I don't know what's happening uh, the day before the, the series begins, but on the 7th, I was expecting to get all painted up and show up there. Yes. I'm just going to show up. Absolutely. And, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Passion Avenue, Waterloo. They're, they're, they're turning. So it's the Waterloo site, for those that don't know, is underneath what they call the London Arches, Leak Arches, which is underneath Waterloo Station. Great place. <laughs> Uh, and the Waterloo site is a is a proper Philly dive bar. You know, it's dark, sports screens everywhere. You know, good good beer, good American food, wings, cheesesteaks, legit. Uh, and in the right. tunnels where they are, they're shutting it all down and they're creating a Reading Terminal Market, London style. So That's they're going to have amazing. DJs. They're going to have big screens. Uh, they're going to have loads of food and drink vendors, tailgate games. Uh, we're hoping to get some special guests in there as well. Uh, and to have you down there as well, all painted up, it's just going to add to it. So that will be that will be magic on the Friday. I, I I am I am way excited. I mean, it's it's this has been. I mean, once this came out, I was like. Oh my lord, that's that's going to be amazing. <laughs> and and I'm wondering, I'm like, I'm assuming that the stadium is a football stadium, no. a soccer stadium. So I'm interested to see how they, you know, make it into a baseball stadium. Oh, it's, and, it's it's incredible. I was down there last weekend, been shown around and how they do it. Yep, yep. It takes them two weeks to turn it around. Like home plate is is in the tunnel where they walk out. You know, it, they've got to completely reconstruct it. They've got to move some stands around because it's still temporary. The, the football club, West Ham, don't actually own the stadium. So they play in there during the, the football season. And then when they're done, they're out because they have big music festivals and concerts there. The baseball, Monster Jam's heading there soon as well, which is a huge event. Uh, so everything West Ham comes down. The transformation is unbelievable. They even increase the capacity to 66,000, uh, which is going to be packed out that weekend. And it's good, and there's no bad views around. They, they they do a great job. You know, the bullpens are in the outfield. There's plenty of space. Uh, first time they had it, it was the Red Sox Yankees, and there was a few things they learned from from that. Having some warm up areas, a bit more space behind home plate, they extended the outfield a little bit. And last year's Cubs card game, I, I thought they nailed it. I thought it was it was brilliant. The weather was great. Touch wood. That's my biggest my biggest fear right now is it's is, is the rain, but June is genuinely a very, very good month in, in London and in the UK. And it's it's unique. You know, the whole area of Stratford has been, the stadium was there for the Olympics back in 2012. And that whole area got completely transformed. Um, so it's, have you been to, have you been to Nationals Park? You know Nationals Park? Yes, I have been. It's a, it's a bit similar to that. You've got a lot of sports bars. and So you've got a lot of restaurants, bars, shopping, all in that area. But, to a far grander scale. This is one of the biggest complexes in Europe. Um, 
and you've got Hackney, the other side, which has got some great breweries, some great pizzerias and pubs and quite artsy vibe area. The area is fantastic. Olympic Park's fantastic. The stadium's fantastic. And the atmosphere, more than anything else, is brilliant because you're going to have thousands of Philly fans who travel well, as we know. The Seven Line Army and the Mets fans are all coming over, yeah. yeah. But you've also got fans there from all over Europe repping every single baseball team there is. They're only either who they play for in Europe. Every MLB team's repped. Every, so many World, Cla World Baseball Classic jerseys repped. It is just the atmosphere and the festival. Uh, it, it is a festival of baseball is the way I, I can best describe it. It's like a bubble. It's like a big baseball bubble and everybody's happy. Everybody's there for the love of the sport. I think this year with the Phillies Mets rivalry, there'll be more intensity. Like this feels like a proper, you know, Cubs and Cars, no disrespect to them. It's a good rivalry. It's, it's there, but the Phillies and Mets, this is, I mean, the these are. I mean, I love it when the Seven Line Army comes down to Philadelphia. Uh, obviously, they do one game a year in Philly. Uh, I always go up and I, you know, <laughs> I, I welcome them the way that I do that, and and they know me now. Like it's like a lot yeah. of those guys follow me because of of our friendly banter and yeah, yeah, the way yeah. that we go back and forth. I mean, because the one thing that Mets fans know is that at the end of the season, they're going to Mets it up. And it's right. and then, then they're going to wind up out, and it's you know I remember they beat us what it, that, that seventeen games that uh, they wound up winning like fourteen we were yeah. like three and fourteen and they're knocked out in the first round and we go to the World Series you know so like it's those are, sweet isn't it you know, you know? yeah exactly you know, we we have the last laugh yeah I mean I remember I remember being at that game where we're up like eight to one in the ninth oh game we've game. no I I've still got nightmares. Still got nightmares over that. I, I went to bed after that eighth inning thinking, and I even woke up, I didn't even check the score the next morning because I, I just, there was no chance we lost. And I remember right. in the middle of the morning going, why does that put us in the standings now? I wonder how we're doing. And then I, I looked and it's like, I turned on social media and I just, I just could not believe what I was seeing. Yeah, it was, it was, it was a, that was a tough night. That was a very tough night because it was a little chilly as well. And yeah. it was, I, I'm sitting there and I, I'm making videos and then I'm making more videos just saying, hey, we ain't done yet. And then I'm like, oh, wow, this is this is really yeah, this going is, it, it a happened. little too far. And it's like, <laughs> all right, well, I guess we lost. Uh, Jamie, thank you so much for coming on, buddy. I, I cannot wait to connect with you when you're in London uh, and, and do some we're gonna do some videos together. We're going to collaborate. Absolutely. I mean, I'm going to have my phone. I'm going to have like four different charging banks with me because I feel like I'm going to be using my phone literally nonstop. But I, I'm I'm excited. I'm assuming we're going to you're going to be doing a live broadcast uh, one of those days. So yep, I'm yep. going to jump on that. Figure I'll just introduce uh, invite myself on. I'm going to you don't even crash, need to introduce yourself. You know, <laughs> I'm introducing myself. Everybody knows who you are, Jamie. Everybody knows who you are. And I I'm excited and having you there as the Philly sports guy, just, it's just going to add to the experience. Like I said, people are excited to see you They're excited to have their picture with you. You know, you're up there with the fanatic, you know, it, it, you're, you're, you're a trademark to the Phillies and the and Philly sports team. Uh, you know, and I really do appreciate that. Cause it's, it's funny how like people will, they're like, Oh, well, I can't get a picture with the fanatic. So I got the Philly sports guy and that's the same thing. And it's like to, to be put on that level is, uh, just amazing, and, and I really am appreciative uh, of everybody who follows that and, and is excited to see me. To be honest, I'm just as excited to see you guys. Like, I, I'm going to geek out over there just <laughs> as much as you guys are going to geek out on me because it's it's a new experience, and the fact that I get to bring my energy to add to it is just awesome. Amazing. Uh, one final thing i, I got to ask. Do you ever pinch yourself sometimes? Like you're at the draft, you're at the biggest events, you're worldwide renowned for in sports and sports bases. Do you ever pinch yourself and go, "What is this? Is surreal? What, what's going on?" Do you ever have any of those that that moment sometimes? Sometimes I, there are there are times where I, you know, for instance, when when the Eagles went to the Super Bowl. I took an Uber ride and that Uber ride was about 45 minutes long to get from where I was staying to the stadium. And I, I literally, I thank God I brought my, my makeup with me to touch, touch up because I just started kind of 
crying because all the things that I've done and all the things that I've been to just kind of hit home. And it was like when you're there and you're seeing it all, and it's like I was at the World Series. I, I was at the Eastern Conference Finals for the soccer team. I, And now I'm at the Super Bowl, and it's just like, wow. Wow, yeah. that this is and that everybody knows me. Everybody's looking to me to be part of the excitement and to get themselves more excited. And and I, I'm just honored. I, I'm honored in, in so many different ways and blessed to be able to do this and to share my experiences with so many other people. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, but, uh, you know, the ones that don't like it, it doesn't matter anymore because there's right. so many people that that I've been able to touch that I don't even know uh, that uh, it just absolutely uh, it amazes me. And I'm humbled. Uh, I, I, Jamie, I love that. I absolutely love that. That's a great note to end on as well. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming up. For those who maybe don't know, where can they find you on the socials? Just... You go on to any type of search engine, the Philly sports guy, and you're going to find me. Uh, I'm Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Uh, the Philly sports guy is everywhere. I, I, as I say, I'm like Visa everywhere you want to be. I love that. Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, guys, thank you for watching and for listening. Uh, this has been Broad Street to Britain, the UK footy show. Uh, we've got some more guests lined up very soon as we build up to the London series. We are less than five weeks away. I, I talk about pinching my, ourselves. I can't believe I'm even saying that. The footy's to be here in under five weeks. The footy sports guy, the fanatic, Bryce Harper. Wow. Guys, see you soon. Thank you. Let's go Phillies. Yeah. <laughs> I love it.